is existent or being in terms of thought and the real existent or being. And on top of everything, this existence, since encompass all the other existence, go with a big existence, big E. Then it's very easy. If this being, this existence, is a bigger one, and the language help us, this being also is in all the objects. This existence is in all the objects, and all the objects participate of it. We're talking about almost God here. Yeah. yeah. And if it is in all the objects, and all the objects participate, sounds in a way a little bit special and then it's not difficult to make a translation from being to God for example obviously is he saying Thomas it now? Yeah, yeah Thomas Ac Thomas Ac Aquinas, Aquinas. Aquinas. Ac yes Thomas Aquinas made that with no impunity yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying so when we are talking in logical terms, the, diff, the, 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 the most ample difference of the abstraction of the elapsing of the phenomena is the concept of being or existence. And the being are always a preoccupation for the students of philosophy. And the not being concept, yeah, appears as the difference of the difference, the most ample difference. Here we're talking about uh, mental discipline, third quadrant, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I have never read, read this material since, so I, I didn't really made any connection, you know. But and now I understand that, that from the from the logical thing, all the do you remember? You know what it is, and what is not, and the you know, movement all, form, the yeah. movement. Well, and the and the part that what is not, the not. Uh -huh. yeah? He's saying it's not exactly what what the, the discipline is, but it's the same language. Yeah, he says. Um, if the concept of being is a maximum concept of differentiation per excellence, or whatever you say in, in English, par excellence. The, par the excellence. not being is the different concept, even more ample than all the differences given. So if this, the entity is a maximum, what is not uh -huh. is a bigger one, encompasses everything. Uh -huh. uh, If we say it in a different word, in a different way, the most ample difference in the abstraction of the elapsing of the phenomena is the being and the not being appears as a difference of the most ample difference. So if we carry the process of thinking to the maximum, yeah, and the maximum abstraction, no matter what, we're going to find a difference. We're going to find the, what is not, no matter what. Uh -huh. And that's going to be the most ample difference of all. Uh -huh. Because it's a structure, right? Sure. Wow, this is too good. We cannot think in terms of being and not being if you do not work with differences. And we are working with differences in a very ample sense, in a, an abstract sense, right? But in reality, the same system of operations is in place when I am talking about the little buttons yeah, of the, ta of the tape recorder. The thing doesn't change much. Yeah? It has the same, 
it has a lot more mysticism to talk about the being and the not being, but the reality is that the operations are exactly the same. Oh, God. But you carry them to a maximum abstraction. Oh, it's so <laughs> insane, right? Yeah. Bring me back no, to the buttons. Yeah, they are not different. The not being appears as difference of the most ample abstraction. Being and not being appears like a temporal. Yeah, they appear as moments that are maximum abstractions, and in that we see precisely that are no more than abstractions that are not realities, and that idea that appear as detained, as universal, as eternal in a such in 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 a way, yeah. In precisely in that they show that are abstractions, because they are not, because are operations of the thinking process and not realities. We're in another world. Shit. Really. Oh, okay. Yeah. He moves to another world there, of this world of abstraction. Exactly right. He moves. He, he talked about that somewhere else too. Yeah. The because. Of abstraction. It was enough to say to 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 do the 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 first part, you know. Yeah. And then after that, everything works the same. Yeah. So if you carry the abstraction to a maximum, is the being and the not being, the existence yeah. and the non-existence, right? So, because if by opposite, right, this being and this not being, they they have mobility then they would be suspicious. But it happens that it's not the case. They appear as detained, as they are out of time, atemporal. Then it becomes clear that is the work itself of abstraction in the thinking, what is in, in place. Therefore, when we talk about existence, we should notice that in logical terms, not psychologicals, we are making reference to an abstraction, and that in psychological terms, we are mentioning the most ample object of the compensation that the consciousness will structure. Let me, I have to do this right. Yeah? So, the, the most ample object yeah, of compensation for the consciousness in the world yeah, is precisely that being, right? Being that we were talking from a psych... He's saying, in, in, in psychological terms, you're mentioning the biggest object that exist in the world as a structuring compensation of the consciousness. Mm -hmm. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Do you notice the connections with the form, with the pure form? <laughs> Therefore, when I speak about being in terms, in logical terms, I am talking about the maximum am logical amplitude in the concept. Yeah? But when I talk about being in psychological terms, I am talking about the object that is the biggest or more ample object able to compensate in a structural way the thinking. is able to compensate all the acts of the thinking that are referred to different objects and different things. In this case, there is a being that psychologically can compensate all the dynamic operations of the thinking process and that in the practical life goes referring to different things. Psychologically appears the being 
like a little body compensating for all the activity of the thinking process. This can be understood in a much better way by the development of the pure form. 